My New York is black and white. The sense of depicting reality in its sometimes sad, grim, often depressing, maybe. The point is, is that what is light and how does one interpret light? It depends on the story you want to tell and what is the best way to tell that story. I felt coming down here was an opportunity for me to explore my surroundings based on the fact that the area was so compelling visually. I was in the middle of a, a place that seemed to be off the beaten path. Very few people were living here. I'm not only talking about the waterfront area by the East River, but it was Tribeca, it was the Bowery. It was all these places that in my new book I consider Lower Manhattan. It's because of this emptiness and this out of the way sense, it started pulling me. And one of the reasons was because there were no skyscrapers. We had no large buildings in the immediate area. It's the first time I can experience light the water in a very different way, and certainly, certainly living next to the Brooklyn Bridge captivated me. Going through negatives is a very arduous thing and an exciting thing. So I started going back in time looking for I don't know what. When you're younger, you don't have the eye, the experience that you have when you're older, so things that you didn't think that were important back then could very possibly be important now. It's an unusual thing to be a resident of an area and at the same time be a serious artist and have subject matter that you can be familiar with in a way perhaps that other people would not. Like for example, just walking back and forth under the bridge. Someone like me who knows every single block, literally, of lower Manhattan, I, I, almost like I can go with my eyes closed, I stand there sometimes now and go, oh, where am I? Uh, you know, uh, that's pretty amazing. I'm a New Yorker and I'm, I'm a, a girl from Brooklyn and I feel that the homogenization of the world and the fact that we are losing our collective memory of what is important and what history can teach us is so critical. It was my need to hold on to these things that I consider to be such characteristics of New York, the, the New York that I believed in and loved and felt so sympathetic to. I was very intrigued by all the eccentricities that went on there because you have to remember that when I was there, I caught the last wave of men literally working with tools that have disappeared. You know, uh, uh, forklifts now replace the hand trucks. There were no computers, so everything was done by brain work. <laughs> and you had to compute on your receipt pad how much, how many, who owed you money. One of the stories I've told before was the first night I went down, I had to photograph the Paris Bar. The Paris Bar was a national treasure for so many reasons. And when they threw me out of there, that night, I was so angry. This isn't for me. I mean, we need these pictures in the world, you know, to see these faces of these men, you know, with the smoke billowing out and the fluorescent lighting hitting Mikey the bartender who looked like Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca with that cigarette. So I went back because I needed to try again. And those experiences, those early experiences where I made a little headway became the framework for moving forward with this piece. <laughs>
Other boxes of photographs contain contact sheets from decades of traversing again and again the familiar streets of Lower Manhattan, Chinatown, Tribeca, and the Bowery. I shot rooms of buildings, the demolition of famous waterfront saloons, ancient alleyways, and in some cases, 19th century buildings destroyed by mysterious fires and soon after replaced with new developments. What did the passage of decades reveal to me? What dynamics were at play in my images of the same streets that I walked repeatedly for years? What fell off as the old was swept away by the new? Thank you.